Hello and welcome to part 2 in the video series where I am building a balancing robot. So since last time I have done the PID control for the motors and in this episode it's going to be all about reading the, uh, the IMU which is basically the gyroscope and the accelerometer. Now I want to give you a quick overview of what we are dealing with. So for this project I'll be using an IMU that's called MPU6050 and it's basically just a little very very small circuit board that has an accelerometer and a gyroscope and this this is how big it is it's very very small okay so it contains a 3 axis accelerometer and a 3 axis gyroscope so the MPU6050 is quite an impressive and complicated chip. The first question becomes, how do we even send data from the Arduino Nano to the MPU6050? That is done using a protocol called I2C. In order to make the I2C communication easier, I'm going to use the Arduino library that's called wire.h. If you're working with the MPU6050 yourself, you have probably come across this page on the Arduino Playground where you get this example sketch and what they are doing is that they are reading the accelerometer, the temperature and the gyroscope data. From the example on the Arduino Playground I have written my own sketch to read the raw data from the uh, IMU and as you can see on the screen we are getting some data output. And these are the raw data, and the, these need to be interpreted. But if I move this around, you may be able to see that we are getting some, some different readings. And the raw values that the IMU is outputting should be interpreted by these kinds of tables. So when you configure your accelerometer, you can configure it to have a specific scale. And the same thing can be done with the, ex the gyroscope. And this basically means what the, the outer limits of the, in this case, the accelerometer output can be. So by default, it's zero. And that means that the range can go from plus and minus uh, two Gs. And um, that means you have a sensitivity of basically 16,384 uh, sensitivity levels per G um, basically and if we look at the data that I'm receiving you can see that the parameter that says ACCC is outputting around 16,500 and that's that's pretty good because currently we are on earth and here the um, here we have about 1 G okay the same thing goes for the gyroscope, you can set it up to have these kinds of sensitivities. Using the LSB sensitivity, I've now converted the raw values to actual values that make sense. You can see about 1G in the C axis, and then we have a little bit of drift on the X and Y axis, and quite a bit of, bit of drift on the gyroscope. I've come across something called the complementary filter which is a way that you can combine your accelerometer data with your gyroscope data to get a better estimate of your vehicle's orientation. So let's take a look. Let's say you have your, your IMU at some, some, some random angle. Then the blue, yet red and green arrows, they show the acceleration in X, Y and Z. And then the uh, summed vector is going to be the black line if you sum the three vectors and then you'll be able to measure your pitch and roll angle compared to the uh, the gravity vector and this is a pretty good way to measure the orientation but if there's any disturbance if you move the IMU or cause any kind of acceleration then this measurement is going to be very unreliable if we're talking about the gyro, then the gyro has pretty low noise, but it has a tendency to drift. 
And why is that? Well, we're using a rate gyro, which means that the gyro is, is constantly outputting the rate that it's changing. So in order for us to get the absolute orientation, which, which this system can do in just one measurement, then we will have to do so the angle at any time at the time t is going to be angular velocity uh, integrated over time this means that if your signal is noisy then you're going to be accumulating a lot of noise in your in your estimated angle so the complementary filter is a way that you can combine the no drift properties of your accelerometer with the uh, low noise and fast response time from your gyroscope. Here's an overview of the complementary filter that I'm going to be using. So here we have the accelerator, accelerometer raw data and the gyroscope's raw data. You have the angular velocity which is the raw data from the gyro and that is pretty precise. As you can see it's it's you're very you're likely to get a accurate um, measurement and when we have a measurement that that is prone to um, noise then the angle is going to drift all around depending on the noise patterns that are present but for the accelerometer since we are measuring the gravity vector it's going to be always centered around zero so if you have some object like this one that's being moved around in some random way then generally if you measure the gravity vector it's of course going to have a lot of noise because you have a lot of like noise movements but on average it's most likely always going to be with the center around the, the perfect um, the perfect orientation Here's an overview of the math that goes into measuring the pitch and roll angle using the accelerometer. This is the math, pretty basic. Let's look at this example. So here we have the IMU and this is showing the accelerometer's three components as we have a gravity vector like this. So we want to find the roll and pitch angle of the IMU. Well, let's look at it from, from this side. So we have Y going like this. In this case, we can see the pitch angle um, basically makes a triangle with the gravity vector. And in this case, I'm only looking at the gravity vector in the XC plane. And as you can see, it's a triangle and this is the angle. So let's first calculate the gravity vector it's done using Pythagoras theorem and then to get the pitch angle we basically use the inverse cosine and um, we can calculate the pitch angle the same thing goes for the roll angle here we have the C angle which is this one going down into the whiteboard we're calculating the gravity vector in the XY plane and here we calculate the roll angle. The complementary filter is now working. So right now, this is laying flat and it says it has an angle of around 0 0.8 degrees. And when I start to rotate it, the angle updates and uh, it is very stable. Sorry for all the noise. The 3D printer is uh, currently running. Here I will explain method one of doing um, auto level. So looking at this diagram, we have the black vertical line right here. This is supposed to represent the gravity vector from Earth. And this is basically um, perfectly straight up and down. Um, so the, the issue is that um, we will not be able to mount the uh, accelerometer inside the vehicle 
perfectly straight and perfectly aligned with the gravity vector. There will be some kind of a deviation, so when the vehicle is standing perfectly uh, straight up, the accelerometer, the, sorry, the IMU is going to be slightly tilted in, in, which, in, in some way. And um, so you can see the blue line is supposed to represent uh, like the offset and then we will have some kind of an error. And uh, this means that whenever the vehicle thinks it's standing straight up, it's actually standing at a slight angle. And uh, the way to combat that is very easy. We simply use some kind of a right angle and then we can calibrate the vehicle and uh, basically tell it Okay, right now you're standing straight up. Please remember these offsets, and uh, then it's then it's going to know um, which way is up or down. So f to control this, we will use a PID controller, where the set point is uh, big omega, which is basically the absolute angle of the vehicle. And after we have done the uh, calibration, this is going to be uh, with almost no error compared to the absolute uh, gravity vector. And then we can manipulate uh, this angle using the uh, radio transmitter and receiver um, and that way we can control the vehicle. This is the state diagram that shows how the robot is going to behave. So first when it's off you can power it on and it will go into standby mode. And here it can do two things. It can go into balancing mode and calibration mode. So if you want to go into calibration mode, the condition says that the acceleration needs to exceed 1.5 g's. So you basically need to shake the robot and then it's going to go into calibration mode. So here it it's going to uh, look for this scenario. So when the angular velocity is below plus or minus 0 0.5 degrees per second, or some other value for five seconds, then it's going to calibrate the absolute uh, angle to zero. It's going to save it to the EEP ROM, um, which is some memory that you can access after you have uh, turned on and off the uh, Arduino. And then it's going to indicate that the calibration is complete by slowly rotating the motors for one second. And when the calibration is complete, it's going to go back into standby mode. Then, to go into balancing mode, you basically need to, uh, the rotational velocity needs to exceed 200 degrees per second. So if you take the vehicle and rotate it, it's going to start the balancing mode. And the balancing mode takes a RC input, which is the set point. So that is the ability to control the vehicle um, with an RC signal and it uses the saved calibration data to know which way is up or down. And then the balancing starts when the absolute uh, angle has been between plus or minus 10 degrees for more than five seconds. And uh, so that means when you have activated the balancing, you basically just need to put it upright and then it's going to start balancing after five seconds. And the balancing stops when the angle is below 45 degrees or above 45 degrees. So that means if you take the vehicle and turn it on its side, then it's going to stop balancing. And this also means that if, it, if the vehicle for some reason falls over, it's going to stop on its own. So how it's going to do the balancing? It's basically a PID controller uh, that tries to set the absolute angle at the desired set point. So this is the basic overview of uh, how the vehicle is going to behave. I want to control both the yaw rate and the pitch angle of the vehicle. So here you can see from the side view, this is where the pitch angle is, and from the top view, this is how the yaw is going to work. Um, so I need to control both of these things simultaneously. And the way it's done is by controlling the speed of the left and right motors. And um, the way I'm going to be doing it is by running a, for like the left motor, I'll run the PID loop for the pitch angle, and that's going to give me some kind of, a, some, some motor speed, 
and then I'm also going to run the PID loop for the yaw rate and in one case I'm going to add it and for the other motor I'm going to uh, be subtracting the yaw um, and the reason is if you want something to yaw you need one side to move forwards and the other side to move backwards um, so in this way uh, I will be able to um, yeah, control the yaw. Something I keep need to keep in mind is uh, this effect. Um, let's look at this motor over here. If we look at the motor from this direction, then it means um, here the motor is going to be moving counterclockwise. And if you mirror the same motor, then when this motor is moving counterclockwise, it's actually going in the opposite direction. Um, so this means that we somehow need to reverse the direction. We could do this by reversing the um, the wires on the encoders, or we could multiply one of these lines by uh, minus one. There are multiple ways, and I think I'm just going to uh, multiply one of these lines by uh, minus one. I've now finished the code that does the calibration. Um, and also the changing between the three modes. So right now it's in standby mode and if I uh, rotate it, as you can see now it's solid blue. This means it's in active balance mode. If it sees an angle over 45 degrees, it's gonna go back into uh, standby mode. And let me try again. There we go. And um, if it sees an acceleration more than 2 Gs, it's going to go into calibration mode. There we go, now it's blinking pretty fast. And what I need to do now is hold it steady at some angle um, until it has decided that it has got the correct amount of uh, samples. So if I hold it up against this piece, There we go, you can see it's now gone back into standby mode and it has captured uh, the angle. As you can see I've started to put some of the wires inside the robot. I have finished the last bit of code and uh, for now it's actually working a little bit. I've done very little tuning and uh, I'll definitely definitely need to do some more in order to uh, make it work properly. Right now it's only using a, uh, a P-gain um, and uh, it also has all the wires attached so that's no good either. Um, but it's definitely a pretty good starting point for uh, further tuning. As you guys can see, the balancing robot is not working particularly well at the moment. And there are a couple of reasons for that. Reason number one is that it's probably not uh, tuned correctly at the moment. So the PID tuning could be a little bit better. Uh, reason number two is that uh, my programming may as well be wrong. So I'm doing something wrong uh, that makes it not uh, work properly. Another reason is that I got all these wires hanging and uh, these have a tendency to pull on the on the robot so like that uh, increases the the oscillations I think I have a smaller version of the Arduino Mega on the way um, it's being shipped from China but that will be able to fit inside the robot um, another reason is that 
the motors that I'm using, they have a very uh, low resolution encoders. So on these motors, when I spin the output shaft one revolution, um, it counts 475 pulses. And that is, that's, that's very low resolution. It's only a little bit, a little bit more, more than, or a little bit smaller than one, de one degree. Um, I have purchased some uh, I2C encoders that run, what was it? 14 bits, I think. It's, it's 4,000 pulses per revolution. So I will use those to fit onto these motors and um, then I'll be able to get much better resolution. Another thing, and that is what, something that is really bothering me, is that these ESCs, um, they are not very good. Like, they're absolutely terrible for this purpose, actually. Um, it's like, they have a really hard time just giving a very small amount of power. It's like it's either s no power, or it's like 10% of the power. I'd like to do like one or a half percent of the power to really very uh, closely uh, control these motors. So there's a lot of issues with this system. I believe um, in order to get this to work, it's going to require some hardware upgrades uh, in combination with some better software. And uh, it's not going to it's not all going to be done in this episode. So this is going to be episode two, and it's hope hopefully going to be working in episode three.